Good morning, good morning, my creative friends, and welcome to Painting in Your PJs Live with Manette. I'm Dr. Manette Riordan, and Painting in Your PJs is all about using intuitive art and the expressive arts and writing to really connect with who we're being, who we want to be, what's going on with us. And so welcome, welcome, welcome. If you're brand new to painting in your PJs, I'm delighted you're here. Thanks for joining me live, either on YouTube or over on Facebook. The live conversation is definitely happening over on YouTube. So you can pop on over there if you want to choose to join the chat, or I will come back and make sure that I respond to all the comments on Facebook as well. And good morning, Kim. And if you're brand new, I encourage you to please subscribe to my channel. Uh, click the little notifications bell to get notified when I go live. Throughout the month of December, I'm going live most mornings at 7 a.m. No evening calls uh, the next couple of weeks because uh, my daughter is here visiting and we have all kinds of fun things planned. And I won't be here Thursday morning because I have an early morning dentist appointment. Oh, joy. But I am going live as often as I can for this 21 days of intuitive art and just deep personal reflection here at the end of the year using the prompts from my end of year creative self-reflection kit. The link to take a look at that kit is in the description of the video. Here's some of the pages from this past week that I've been working on and I had the desire to just start with some white pages this morning and do some intuitive collage. So you can see I have a big messy pile of stuff here on my page. I need to trim up this just a little bit. I've been Working in this circle journal is the first time I've made a circle journal. I'm really loving the process. It's also the first time I've worked in single pages and then am figuring out how to put them together and bind them later. Here was the first signature that I created in week number one and I I'm impressed with my own consistency and sticking to this project. So these were all inspired by prompts in that 118 prompts. And this is supposed to say adventure. And I realize I never came back and wrote that on here. All right. And eventually all these signatures will get bound together in one book. But I have a juicy prompt for us today. It really struck me that this one is probably a, a super important thing to talk about this time of year. And the prompt specifically reads, do you think you can spend the entire day in your own company without feeling bored? Do you think you could spend an entire day in your own company without feeling bored. Love that prompt. I think it's absolutely fascinating, which led me down a little bit of a rabbit hole with my own uh, thinking and reflecting this morning and my own journaling and doing my morning pages before I got on the call live with you. It started getting me into this curiosity of what's the difference between boredom and loneliness. For so many people, loneliness, and I'm just going to start gluing some paper down. I'm going to move some of these figures away. I had some different ideas for, for images and I'm thinking maybe some fun pop-ups in this one. So I have some ideas where I want to go, but I'm going to start with just covering this middle spread here with some collage bits that I had just lying around on my table. It's a great way to use up bits and pieces of collage paper. I'm looking for, feel like I need some, uh, book pages and surely I have some book pages lying around. All right, I'm keeping myself on track with my own thoughts. The difference between boredom and loneliness. All right, I usually keep an extra book that I pull pages around. 
and it must have gotten moved or be floating around. So, okay, apparently I'm not meant to have words on the pages today. It's all good. So for me, boredom is actually a good thing. Boredom is not a bad thing. We often judge boredom as bad or not useful. And if I had to spend a day home alone by myself, good morning, Marion, uh, I would be quite happy. I would be well entertained. I have no lack of things that I love to do, want to do. So again, I'm just going to get some intuitive collage bits down on here using things that are on the paper. But would spending a whole day by myself create some loneliness? And this is such an interesting question as, especially at the time of the holidays, when loneliness can be at an all-time high. There have certainly been holidays where I wasn't with my family or able to travel to see family. And I love being with my family at the holidays. It's really important to me. So throughout the years, I've made a lot of effort to really make that happen. And I'm so excited to have my daughter and her partner here for the holidays. And we're going to meet my son's partner's parents for the first time on Christmas Day. So it feels very full and busy, right? So when I think about spending a whole day by myself, it doesn't feel like I would be bored. For me personally, it feels like I would relish the solitude. And do you know that it's been shown that boredom is one of the best tools to amplify creativity, that many of our, I think that's enough, enough pieces of that, that many of our best ideas come from being bored. And I often think about childhood, and kids are so often, especially today, saying they're bored. Well, when I was a kid, you know, if we started complaining about being bored, we were just kicked outside to go play. And we had to come up with creative ideas and opportunities on our own. We made up stories, we built forts, we explored the neighborhood. All right, I'm kind of wanting to do something with these taggy bits as well. So maybe I'm going to kind of work on all of these at the same time. Whereas loneliness is a state of feeling disconnected, of not having people to share with, of feeling alone or isolated, very different from boredom. And yet boredom can be connected to both depression and loneliness at times. And this is why I'm such an advocate for really learning how to understand and name our feelings to explore what that looks like. And one of the things in our creative self-care bundle that I was super excited to share with people is our color-coded emotions class. And that class is all about helping you understand the difference between color and feelings. There's a little uh, representation of Klimt's The Kiss there that feels kind of fun. A weird guy getting swallowed by a fish and maybe this little Cupid here. So again, just creating intuitively. I don't have a plan right now for where I'm going or what I'm doing. And as we sit here at the end of the year and start to think ahead to the coming year and what we want to create more of, this feels like a picture that really, for me, represents loneliness, right? Loneliness, but not boredom. Boredom is I don't have enough to do or... Uh, I'm not loving anything that I'm doing. It, you know, I'm, I'm seeking inspiration and I need to reconnect to my imagination. 
And I'm curious other thoughts on boredom. If you had a whole day to spend to yourself, would you be bored? Would you be delighted? And when was the last day that you spent a whole day by yourself? Maybe that's common for some of you that are listening. Um, maybe it's too common for some of you and what you're longing for is a little more connection. I often think that I have a lot of gratitude for, yeah, isn't that an amazing image? I don't know who the artist is, but um, it's a, a very, very powerful, powerful image. Um, grateful for the sort of surge of online classes that happened during the pandemic. And as we went all online and being online on Zoom became commonplace for most of the world, it kept us connected in a time that was quite lonely and very isolating. I felt very grateful to have family at home at that time as well. And I had friends who were single and lived alone and maybe had their one little, you know, group of, of people that they could connect with. And it, it was a rough time for so many of us. But it was also a time where there was an explosion of creativity in all kinds of really fascinating ways because people were no longer spending hours co commuting or, you know, hours at kids' practices. And, you know, the, all of a sudden there was this freedom of time. And so what happened because of that was an explosion of creativity, fun dance videos on YouTube, people writing books and telling stories. And then there were the people that said, oh my gosh, because of this, I'm going to go finally write that book or I'm going to do this or I'm going to do that. And none of that happened because it was, it was a rough time. And we often didn't have the support that we were used to having. And so as you go into the holidays, think about what do you need in order to thrive during this period? Do you need a little boredom? Do you need some quiet time? Or is really what you need some social connection? Okay, this really needs some something, something, something. I'm gonna just grab my giant box of collage materials. Yes, I also love unstructured time, Marion. And I love time with people, right? I love, for me, there is definitely an intersection. Those are kind of fun. And sometimes a fine line between boredom and loneliness. When I first moved to California in 2012, I didn't know anyone. My kids didn't know anyone. It took a while to, to feel connected. I was so grateful for the Unitarian Universalist Church that we joined when we moved there because it gave us some of those first powerful connections to others and a sense of community. Okay, I don't know why, but I was very clear that this needed some words on it. All right, you guys go back over there. Let's get some down on this page. I also felt clear this morning that this needed to be a double spread. Uh, don't ask me why, so I'm going to trust the story that is going to emerge and unfold here. And I would say right now, I'm longing for boredom. I'm longing for boredom. So things are, have been very, very busy this year in my business and my life in great ways, like amazing opportunities and travel and 
all kinds of fun experiences and events hosted. And I would love a day to be bored in my studio and to putter. And I'm pretty committed, more committed than I have been to finally getting my fourth book written. And I need some boredom. I need some time to noodle and surf and research and play with ideas. I don't need productivity time, right? I don't need hours spent writing that feels like work that's not boredom and I'm not there yet so sometimes when I'm seeking clarity of ideas boredom is my best friend and it's been sorely lacking in my life this year I have not had time to be bored and I think that's um, an important realization for me personally as I say that out loud is Okay, Manette, if that's really what you're longing for. And boredom is different than solitude. I can be bored in company. I can also know that my husband is upstairs and if I need that connection, all I have to do is pop upstairs and I can hide all day long quite happily down here in my studio. And people frequently, especially women, because we tend to be the doers, lack time for ourselves during the holidays. Like I love Christmas Day. It always, well, sometimes this year it's not going to be that, but a lot of times it ends up being that lovely, lazy day. Once all the gifts are open... We've had cinnamon rolls for breakfast, that there is this quietness that descends after all the mayhem. And we just get to enjoy being. So I'd love to hear some other thoughts on this idea of boredom versus loneliness and really being willing to look at what do you personally struggle with. What do you personally struggle with? And you don't have to share that um, out loud, but to just notice if you're feeling lonely, who could you reach out to? I have one of my besties still lives in California and we try at least once a month to get on Zoom calls. for some of that connection. And it's not the same as connecting in person, but seeing each other's faces rather than just texting or a phone call helps keep that connection alive for both of us. And when I look around my studio, at all of the opportunities for play. And right now I have two paintings in my head that I haven't had time to get started yet that are waiting to get painted. I was making some little holiday gifts for people, so I've been focused on that. And it's going to be a while before I'm bored because I have projects. So if you're feeling bored, think about how meaningful are the projects that you have out in front of you. And are they things that you think you should get done, especially as you go into the new year instead of things that you want to get done? And could you schedule in some time for boredom, for daydreaming, for what I call deep rest? which is non-doing, it's absence of input. All right, so I'm gonna trim up the edges of this so I can see where we're at with the collage. This is very wet at the moment also with all that matte medium. I don't know if I'm gonna 
I may have to paint over this to kind of start to pull those collage images all together. When I'm working with intuitive collage, with my journey circles practice, it doesn't usually involve paint. It's usually images only and a glue stick, and it's much simpler in intention. And I think that's where my first thought was, was to go in that direction this morning, and then that wasn't what happened. And it might sound crazy to plan for boredom. So my husband and I went for a walk yesterday and we're talking about, you know, people's resistance to New Year's resolutions. And uh, it's because they're always too big or oftentimes New Year's resolutions are things we think we should do and they feel unachievable and we actually set ourselves up for failure. And I think it's why people stop setting resolutions or goals or anything else at the new year. Okay, I'm going to work on these two little baby bits. I'm not sure how they're going to be part of the story, but they're definitely going to be part of the story. And one of the things that we always focused on, and we still focus on in our own business, but we also taught in our business coaching community, was the benefits of 90 day planning. And my husband brought that up yesterday as a, a different way to think about New Year's resolutions and goals was think about what would you like to accomplish in the first three months of the year? There's a really popular business book that I think is also very applicable to our lives personally called the 12 week year about how if we stop looking quite so far out into the future and we say, you know, what are the most important things to accomplish in the next 90 days, we're a lot more focused and intentional. And so wrapping all of that into my brain this morning with this idea of, do I need to plan for boredom? Do I need to plan for boredom? Curious question. I love this. So I pulled this uh, out of uh, a magazine because I love these blue flowers, but the article is called Venture into the Unknown, Ways to Feel More Comfortable Taking a Different Route. And um, I love this. So there's all kinds of fun ideas in here, but one of them is plan distraction walks. Plan distraction walks, these intentional rambles where you allow yourself to take in your surroundings and be curious work in either rural or urban environments. Go out with the aim of noticing at least five new things that you've previously overlooked, be they tiny insects, leaf shapes, unusual buildings, or painted doorways. It'll help build up your sense that the world is a magical place where things are constantly unfolding outside of your direct experience. I love that because it feels so aligned with this idea of intentional boredom. And this is going to, I think, get put into the book somehow. Distraction walks. And I think intentional boredom is that same concept of when we plan for boredom, then we're planning for creativity. We're planning for the activation of our imagination. Where we create opportunities to see things differently, to see the connections between things differently. When we are overly focused on productivity and having to get things done, and we don't make space for distraction walks or creative rambles. What happens is we get caught in overwhelm. We get caught in beliefs and thinking about, I have to do this, I have to do that. And I think that uh, 
we all should tear up our to-do lists, not a popular opinion, but to-do lists are often impractical. They're not uh, organized or prioritized. Good morning, Blanca. I'm sure after three days with your grandbaby, you're ready for some quiet time and then plan a weekend away. You spend it with you yourself. <laughs> I love that. I don't love to travel alone. I love to be alone, but I like to be uh, home alone more than I like to travel alone. Okay, so we have some interesting things starting to pop up here. So I'm just creating a little symmetry among these pages with the same elements. So each of them has an image, a little paint, right? A few little words, a little bit of music. Still no idea where I'm going with any of this, but again, I think another antidote to boredom is process over product process over product that I'm here enjoying and engaged in my own intuitive creative practice without any need to finish anything or commit to a particular path or make it look like anything. I'm just on the curious exploration and for me intuitive art is an exercise in curiosity, an exercise in curiosity. And that exercise in curiosity can help us get below the surface of what we're thinking to get honest with our feelings. And if you're feeling lonely as opposed to bored, think about who can you reach out to? Sometimes even just a trip to the grocery store can be a cure for loneliness and give us a sense of connection. Now that can't always be the, the, the case because as people, we do need people. I'm someone who I don't need a lot of people, right? So I'm also very, I'm cleaning off my scissors here, trying to keep them from getting overly gunked up with all that matte medium, just taking a baby wipe to them and cleaning them up a little bit. I love this little pair of scissors. And I'm not very kind to them. So every once in a while I try to just de-gunk them a little bit. And connection personally is one of my highest core values, right? It would be in my top three core values. And from that perspective, I need to understand exactly what connection means to me. I don't like big parties. I don't like small talk and chit chat. I like intimate one-on-one -on -one conversations. Um, at big events, I'd rather be on stage in front of the room than in the room having to mix and mingle with people. All right. These are kind of fun just as they are as this sort of idea of just creative exploration. And I'm curious if I just let them be and let them sit and be happily engaged in the process. I get so engaged in the process, I want to just keep playing. So it doesn't feel good to just stop there, even though I really kind of am loving where this is all going and those words they just want to be right here on this page and that's that's all this page needs to maybe keep it super simple and I'm thinking it needs these need a little bit of paint over the top of them just to sort of calm them down and then we could let these be a little more chaotic and I have these two well, I have these three I also pulled out this birdie, but the birdie doesn't feel like it's part of the story. 
like this person feels lonely and trapped. This one feels like connection. This one somehow represents, and I've, I've held onto this image for so long, knowing she would find the right place. Um, feels very like self-assured and comfortable with herself, right? Comfortable with herself. There's nothing that she needs. This one to me, there's this joy and sense of welcome on her face. So I have these three very different faces that all kind of represent this range of boredom to loneliness and everything in between. So I'm thinking in some way or fashion, they're all going to need to be on here. So this kind of reminds me, there's like a, an image of a group of people talking here. And this reminds me of, have you seen the memes going around about JOMO instead of FOMO, the joy of missing out? I absolutely love that idea of the joy of missing out. And it's so funny, this uh, other little strip of paper that I pulled out here says, I am calm, flexible, and responsive to other people. There is no need to rush. Things usually work out exactly as they're supposed to. I wasn't reading these pages as I was picking out the, the, wor the words, but I love it. And this one over here says, make sure your body is comfortable so your mind can spoke, focus. Close your eyes and begin to find your breath. It was a piece about meditation. So even the words through this intuitive process are important on the page. It must be why I felt like there needed to be some words. And I love this little Cupid here. Don't know where I'm going with that one. This one feels like she's going to go on this page. So let's fussy cut her out a little bit here and see if she's going to fit on that little tag. So for me, I think that the difference between boredom and loneliness is how much connection do I need, right? How much connection do I need? I was doing some journaling this morning and thinking, still thinking about what I want my personal focus to be next year. I do like having a word of the year that guides my thinking process, right? Or that really expresses not something I want to get done, but how do I want to feel? How do I want to feel going into the, the new year? All right. Yeah, she's part of this story that is emerging Okay, let's cut this one out as well. And I think in a this day and age where we are so flooded with so much input all the time every day because of our access to entertainment and input is that we've forgotten how to be bored. We've forgotten how to let our minds rest. All right. So I love the chaos of this one. And again, I'm curious if I want to simplify these pages or if there's something where I want to be able to see the, the whole process as well. I love this little guy here, arms raised, almost as if he's trying to catch something or fleeing something. It's hard to know. I'm going to put a little paint on here and we're just going to see what happens. I can always brush it away if it's not what I wanted. And I want a pretty thin layer of that paint. It's one of the things I love about the matte medium with the intuitive collage really lets you 
create those layers and push your paint around all the way to create a lot of transparency and when intuitive collage the more transparency the more you can see the letters and words and what's underneath but just adding a little wash of color pushes some of the busyness to the back so it creates a little more calm and a, a lot less of that sort of chaotic feeling of all those different bits of collage and just that one little layer of color feels soothing and calming here all right and then my images are going to pop out more here as well all right beautiful story that's unfolding about this idea of the contrast between happy being bored seeking connection and isolation and loneliness they're different energies and throughout our lives at one time or another we experience all of these and what I want to encourage you to think about today is intentional boredom loneliness is a different thing if you're struggling with loneliness then I encourage you to reach out and make a meaningful connection with at least one person okay let's get some and there are many, many books and university studies and departments of psychology doing studies right now on the ec epidemic of loneliness globally. The epidemic of loneliness. And these studies started long before the pandemic, which I think amplified, really amplified our feelings of loneliness. I think this one's gonna be a little tip in here. I love this feels like curiosity and curiosity and connection for me again are those bridges from intentional boredom or intentional solitude to loneliness. And to me, I get really curious about this idea that culturally we're lonelier than we ever have been before. And part of that is we've changed the way we live. We don't live close to extended family, maybe by choice, maybe by work. I love the idea of having a chosen family if your family of origin is not the family that you want to spend time with then having chosen family that you create hi Georgia you come say hi come on well either up or down dude oops I did not get that going in the right direction. Let's try this again. Okay, so this way is up. I want to be able to actually read this. So this is the little quote about distraction walks. Really felt like it needed to be part of this as a reminder. I think most of my walks are distraction walks when I walk alone. When I walk with Brad, we're usually, you know, deep in conversation. All right, Missy. Nope, that's not helpful. All right. And I have this fun. Oh, I had some fun with my die cut machine this morning with some little branches and twiggy bits. So maybe this is going to get a little branch and twiggy bit. And I think one of these, I have a whole box of these little brad scenting, sitting here. And so I think I might attach this with a brad rather than a tip in 
but I think this needs a pop of color and wants to go on this page so that we can integrate those a little bit. So that's coming together nicely. So funny, she's been floating around so long that I am jealous of which piece, Marion, that I'm finding I'm reluctant to nail her down. Um, but my solitary walks are often distraction walks where I'm getting up close and taking tiny photographs of things and looking at all of the flowers. I do it with my husband as well, but not as much. Over the years, we laughed that uh, walking and running together has really saved our marriage. Has really saved our marriage. We spent a lot of time walking and talking through things. Some of our best business ideas have come from our lovely long walks. Oh, the Sizzix cutting machine. Oh my gosh, it is so much fun. Um, I only got a couple of uh, different die cuts to, to start with and I'm excited to start building up that collection a little bit. This was the only fun one I got. The other ones were kind of practical. So maybe getting some of those elements in nature to remind me of those distraction walks. Yeah, I'm really glad that I was able to find it on sale at during the Black Friday sales. I'm kind of liking this sort of neutral craft color on there as adding a, a new color and adding one more layer to these pieces here. Somehow what it needed. And when I'm working in the round like this with my journey circles or in this circle journal or even uh, any size or shape of intuitive collage, notice how I just create over the edges of the page and I trim later. I don't want to get caught up in trimming when I'm in the midst of meaning making, right? And so for me, I think it's... Um, one of the one of the things that I learned from one of my mentors, Kat Caracello, that was such a genius reminder to just be in the process, let it hang over, and then to me it's magical when you do cut away the edges of it and you see the, the final image, it's becomes something even different than you had anticipated. All right, this wants a little touch of our alizarin crimson on it to just kind of marry it with the rest of the palettes. So I've got a tiny brush here. Of course, I took my paintbrushes upstairs yesterday to wash them and didn't bring them back down. So what do we got here? Maybe just a little pop of red on the ends of these berries. As I come to the end of the piece, my happy place with mark making and those final little touches. Just moving some of that color around a little bit. Again, there's no rhyme or reason here, just playing with paint and pulling that color through a few different spots. 
All right, where did my lady go here? Interesting, this one ended up having so many moving parts. And I think uh, somehow it's wanting to convey that movement. Like I said, finding that bridge from loneliness for me is a positive thing. Or excuse me, boredom is a positive thing. Loneliness, not so much. And connection is the bridge. Connection is the bridge for me to intentional boredom. I'm choosing to just be in the process, the exploration, those distraction walks. Whereas loneliness usually is me not reaching out for connection and support when it's needed. Okay, this one needs a little bit of that blue on it to sort of get it married with all of the other pages. Trying to just get a little, little bit out of there as I'm coming near the end of my tube. That feels better. And hole punch. This has a, a small hole in it, but I'm wanting it to have a bigger hole. It feels like it's going to need a little, okay, that didn't work. Let's try again. A little bit of ribbon on there. I've got some lace floating around. So this one definitely feels like it wants to be right in the center. What if this one's down here? She's sort of looking up at these faces, that sweet little face of curiosity. And what I'm feeling curious about is when I go to bind the book together, what would it be like to have something a different shape tucked here to the inside. And I'm sort of annoyed that I punched that hole in the wrong place. So I'm just going to trim that off. All right, so let me bring the other pages. So this is the way that I've been playing with this is just, you know, creating pages and then moving them around. I'm loving this one so much that I'm thinking it's going to get bound in separately as its own page. And this definitely feels like a, a center spread. And not all of the, the pages are cut even. I decided to not worry about that. So if she's tucked in, hi Diego, I see you buddy. Kind of tucked in the center here. Yeah. These are off enough that I don't even notice and I could round that one little square edge there if I wanted to. Or do I want her standing up even more? Because she's going to have the ribbon on it and I love little bits of ribbon and things hanging off of it, which this one doesn't have a lot of yet. So that actually feels pretty good. Okay, so what do I want to stick her down with? Maybe some little bit of paper tape because then I can just color it to fit get a little water here. So paper tape is one of my favorite ways to create stick-ins or tip-ins and flip-outs and all the things inside of a journal. And people keep asking me where I get the white. So uh, it can be hard to find except in very large quantities. But my friend Andrea Shebelu sells it in her 
online shop at a workofheart.com, a workofheart.com, and she sells it in short pieces so that you don't have to buy giant rolls of it. I've had this same roll for years now. Just adding a little bit of color to that paper tape to make it feel like it's part of the overall design. I'm going to hit this dry and then I'm going to tape it on the back as well so it all fits together better. So you can see how right right in that center there if it's not taped on both sides it's not going to flip up as nicely it's also going to get bound right right through that paper tape so we want to make sure we have this adhered pretty well so this one might actually get a longer piece I'm curious if anyone else has a die cut machine they really love. I, I think I got, I had a little one and I wasn't using it. So I gave it away when I moved. And then being in Andrea's studio when we were leading our retreats in San Jose, she had a giant one and so many amazing die cuts and gave me some different ideas for thinking about how to use them. And one of the ways I'm excited to play with them is to cut fun foam for making shapes with to make my own stamps and stencils. Okay. Loving all the the different little layers here of how this is coming together like there's a whole little mini book unfolding and a story unfolding here. She definitely needs a little bit of ribbon off the top. And now I'm going to figure out where. Now I really think it's going to go down here because it's as if this sweet little angel of curiosity is shooting love right out at these lonely images. Okay, I'm going to use my all here. I'm just going to poke a hole through both pages carefully and stick one of these little brads in here. Another fun addition to your mixed media arsenal is to have little brads like this that uh, just give you alternatives for attaching things together. And what I love about using the brads to attach things together is how they move, right? And then things get revealed underneath in a different way than they do here. Intentional boredom, connection, curiosity, and loneliness. So much being explored on these pages here as my second signature starts to come together. So I am on day 12 of 21 and here's our progress so far through 12 different prompts. There was a whole page I did about connection. This was about creating time. This was about my reluctance to ask for help. One of the things that was missing was an adventure. It is a book about becoming, right? And this was someone that I admire for her clarity of purpose and passion. I have to go back and see what the prompt for this one was. But again, loving how all of these stories, that was yesterday's about what creates peace for me, 
and then today we have a big story. And this is becoming a really big, chunky, chunky book, which also makes me super, super happy. And I love, Kim, that name, The Book of Becoming. I was thinking it was just going to say, you know, self-reflection journal. But I may borrow your genius and change the name. And then I know how I'm going to bind it and I'm going to weave all of these together eventually. So that's it for today. I will be back tomorrow for day 13, lucky 13, on our 21 days of intuitive art and write, paint, reflect. Have a beautiful rest of your day. As always, thank you for joining me live. Thank you for catching the replay, and I'll see you guys again soon. Bye-bye.